for you here today is a tour. We're going to make it relatively quick, but you are then obviously invited to come back and I'll give you my own personal tour too. We're going to start here and uh, just talk about, you know, what does it feel like being back in the old auditorium. We call it Haymarket Theater still, uh, and we'll give you more of an update. So what we'll do is we'll talk about what you've remembered, then we'll go with where we are now, then we'll finish with where we're going from here because we've got big plans over the next 15 years. Uh, a lot of construction is going on right now, and I can tell you more about that. But I do want to honor your time, too, because I understand you have a function over the Sheraton. So, shall we get started here? Yeah. All right, come on in. Thanks again for being here. We hope you enjoy your time back here in Palo Alto, or as we know Palo Alto now. I mean, when you go through here, you're going to see things that you wish were still here. You're going to try to remember, oh, this was here, this was there. We'll try our best to help you out. Uh, I forgot to introduce myself. My, my name is Arnie Lim. Uh, I'm actually Pally, class of 1980. I should have been Pally, I should have been cover the class of 1980 because it closed on me after my junior year. So I actually came over here for my senior year only. Four years at Berkeley, one at Stanford to get the credential, and now I came back and started teaching here in 1985. So this is my 29th year teaching here, and the person I replaced, Mr. Kent White. Okay. I'd like to also introduce or let the, my uh, two uh, co-docents introduce themselves here. They're on the sides here. Please, go ahead and introduce Hi. yourself. Uh, Ron Tuttle, class of 55. Well, and right. and my, my daughter was in his class. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's one for you. Ready? Yeah, one of my daughters was in his class of 80 at Cali. I'm Bob French, and I taught at Jordan. Oh, Mr. Six French! Six. <laughs> I stopped this guy today and I told him, I said, they won't recognize me and I won't recognize them. I was thinner and had a different color hair and anyway, Us it's too. nice seeing you. <laughs> now, Bob and, yeah, sure. yeah, Bob and Ron and I are here to uh, listen to your stories. We're also here to tell you uh, and try to answer your questions you might know also because we, through the three of us, we kind of span a few generations here, both pre past, present, and what's going to happen in the future. Uh, but we wanted to start here in a place that was a bit familiar. If it looked, the walls look familiar, the seats look familiar, the smells about the same. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get the walking shoes on too, because we're going to do a fair amount of walking. Also, there is a function here tonight. Uh, it's a dance, the first dance is going on. We'll go by that, you'll see that in a moment. There. But, uh, we'll, yeah, it's not the sock hops anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, start us off here. What do you remember about this place? How many did theater while you're here? Quite a few. Yeah, it's still the same flight. If you're welcome to come up here and take a look at it later on if you want, too. With the ghost light here. Some of you might remember, or and your memory's not too bad on this one. Yeah, it actually, it's, the chairs actually extended quite a bit more up here. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. So what happened was this. Uh, after you left, enrollment was still going down in PAUSD uh, to the point where they're still closing elementary schools and still leveling them, letting developers build housing on it. We're kind of paying for it now, unfortunately. But enrollment really was going down all the way till probably about 85 to 88, 1988, somewhere in there. And so the, the trend that was set up by the board was still the same. Close the school sites, let the developer develop on it, and so on and so forth. Uh, when push came to shove, though, in the 70s, they said, OK, we've got to close a middle school now. Okay, now this is when they started calling them middle schools instead of junior high and senior high. All right, so what happened was in the 70s, they closed Terman. Okay, so the feeder and the gun was gone. Okay, in 79, they closed Coverly. Okay, now that was a big savings in money, but there were repercussions for that one there too. So we're down to two high schools and two middle schools, right? Mid 80s, they closed Jordan. All right, we're really drastically going down. Uh, and so when Jordan closed, and to prevent the Jordan people who were moving over to Wilbur, to feel like they were joining the Wilbur School, they actually went ahead and changed the name of the middle school to something more unique, like Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jane Lathrop Stanford, though. Not that Stanford doesn't get enough props, but they did that anyway. Um, then in 88, there was a proposal to even close Gunn High School. It was a proposal to go down to one high school and one junior high. And the board thought about that. Superintendent, ah, that might be a little short-sighted. Let's hold on to that. Let's try our best to keep Gunn open. And so they did. A month later, actually, the superintendent resigned because he realized he didn't have the backing for his plan. Kind of like in France, right? 
if you're in charge and you don't have the back, you just leave. So what happened was, and it was actually a good decision to keep it open because ever since then, really, we've been growing again. What was supposed to happen was that your parents and my parents, once we finished high school, were going to move out and retire somewhere else. Didn't happen. No, Palo Alto ended up being a real nice place to retire and breathe your last. And that's really kind of what happened. Uh, meanwhile, the economy here started to grow quite well because of HP, Varian, you know, all these other places that you, you grew up with, even though you knew them as mom and dad, right, or your friend's parents. Some of them actually turned out to be uh, quite uh, the entrepreneurs. And that's really how Silicon Valley kind of got started here. So we're in the late 80s, what happens is we start to reopen things again. Jordan reopens, but it opens as the Jordan Jaguars. The teal Jordan Jaguars. Voted on that. They thought it was a car. <laughs> that was the joke at the other end of the day. <laughs> Since then, we've actually grown again. We really have. Uh, and even here at Pally, this is my 29th year here at Pally, for the past, I don't know how many years, each graduating senior class has been replaced with a larger freshman class. And so we're growing and growing and growing and growing. This year, as we started this year, uh, we should have hmm, just slightly over 2,000 students for four grades. Okay. Yeah. When we were here, it was only about 12 or 1,300. Yep. For three grades. Right. For three grades. Three grades. For three grades, yeah. For 100 more. Yeah. In 76, we moved the ninth grade up to the high school. Correct. Yeah. Right. And that was for enrollment purposes to keep some of the things alive at the high school level, uh, just so you can offer things. Then in 91, we moved the sixth grade up, so That's we right. wouldn't have to close any more elements. That's right. So the top dogs at elementary schools now are fifth graders. <laughs> Okay, right now we are running uh, 12 elementary schools. We used to have 21 when we were growing up. You can name some of them, like Van Aken and Crescent Park. On the other side of the town, you had Loma Vista and a few others out there, right? Ortega and so on. Yeah, now it's Ortega Court. <laughs> um, Talisman Court, which is where Ross Road was. De Anza is now a park, you know, and things like that. Um, but that's okay. I mean, change is going to happen. You know that, whether you like it or not. It's just going to happen for the people who live here and such. So, you know, you kind of have to embrace it for what it is. Because we remember Kirk's on California. Actually, some of you might even remember Kirk's on El Camino. Yeah? Yeah, it's right across the street now here in town and country. It's closed, didn't it? No, it's still there, but, uh, you know, kind of under the table and thinking it's being pushed out. More on that later. <laughs> if you want. Yeah. Question, yeah. How long was Jordan closed? And what did they do to the building? Did they rent it out or use it before they reopened it? Jordan closed in 83? No, it closed in 85 and opened in 91. Okay. And it was used somewhat. Hugh Center was a close friend of mine. Hugh and I went over and took every dolphin off the wall because we didn't know what was ever going to happen. We took them all over to JLS. I got Termin Tigers and Coverly Coop. We anything and everything we could because we were really down to kind of one place yeah. with our history. And, uh, and so anyway, the, the uh, 91, then Jordan reopened. They remodeled. And if you've been by Jordan now, yeah. with our new yeah. bond program that they're building here and all over, you go by Jordan, you wouldn't recognize it. This fabulous So now they brought the dolphin back, sort of, but do they well, acknowledge we, that or not? not? I know he did the principles sculpture. Principals come and go and I have to re-educate him. But because uh, <laughs> no one can afford to live here, even if you're a principal. <laughs> you know, for the most part, many teachers don't live here and have an acquaintance with our heritage. Yeah, either that or the teacher is now the secondary income yeah. for the household. I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate. But I don't live in Palo Alto. I live in East Palo Alto. More on that later if you want. <laughs> I think the new principal lives in Mountain View, right? Uh, here? Yeah. This one? No, Mandel Park. Oh, she's in Mandel Yeah, she lives in Mandel Park. Okay. So here's what the plan is for this time. Um, if you, you haven't gotten too, if you've gotten your nostalgia out of the way here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the library, which you sort of kind of remember as a library. Uh, but it's not your typical high school library anymore. You'll see what it's like there. We'll go to a newer classroom, then we'll make our way over to the gym, finally finishing in what we call the tower building, but it's just simply the two-story building here. How much longer is the gym's going to be there before they replace them? 
Good question. Uh, my belief is two years. Two years. What was the question? Sure, the question was how long will the gyms be there? Both the gyms are going down. That's correct. Yeah, we had uh, a very uh, generous benefactor who was supposed to be anonymous, but the name got leaked eventually, um, who has name? donated uh, $25 million Ooh. for us to build new gyms. $25 million. Oh, wow. Well, who is it? Now you have to say. The last name is Peary. P-E-E-R-Y, right, as in Piri and Ariaga. And now if you know the Ariaga name, there's a reason why. Yeah. See, what happened was when we were growing up, both sides of 101, from Mountain View to about San Jose, Santa Clara, was Piri and Ariaga. Okay, and so obviously when um, the Silicon Valley starts to develop, they do their real estate thing, and that's how they really make their fortunes. Now that they're a bit older now, and their sons and now grandsons are actually coming through the school systems, um, it's time for them to go ahead and uh, divest is the wrong word. What is it? They need to um, they need to give back so the government doesn't get. <laughs> we'll put it that way. So that's why you'll see a lot of things around here named Ariaga. Uh, a lot of Stanford things, actually, specifically. He's a thank you. Know, he's the one who actually spearheaded the new Stanford Stadium. Right? But he, at the day after the last football game was for that particular year, they started groundbreaking. And they got it done within 11, 12 months, ready for the next season. Well, his partner, Peary, is now at that age also. And actually, I just taught the Peary grandchildren. That's the dance. Right. Um, the Peary grandchildren are now coming through here also, and so Mr. Peary, grandfather Peary is saying it's time also to go ahead and give back. So he said, yeah, let's take a look around Pally, see what we can do. And he saw the gyms and he said, yeah, that's really not in great shape. You'll see them in a moment, and as beautiful as the main gym is, we'll talk more about that when we get there. Okay. But yeah, it will be gone. It will be gone. Yeah. Another quick question. Sure. Every time I'm kind of cruising through the school, I peek in the administration building, and they still have that same green flooring. <laughs> I think that, that is so cool. Yes. Are they planning on keeping that? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. 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 We're going up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said that about that. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, it's still Battleship Brain. We'll finish our tour there. So you can take a look around. You can go upstairs. Yeah! And all that, okay? <laughs> Shall we go out? Yeah! yeah. Let's Let's go. Go. Can you take them to the green area out here while they turn off? Yeah, the first, we're building it. Right. The first editor of the Campanile came. We spent our first year in the old one. It was 1919. You ready? Yeah. Come on over here for a little bit. Can we, can we dance if yeah. they start the music? Yeah. We'll just stand here for a little bit. All right, so what happened here? Yeah. Senior court is still called senior court, but it's not used by seniors only. And they don't put the freshmen in the garbage cans upside down anymore? Actually, they still do. <laughs> and they're still egging in the freshmen and all that. Yeah, but this has turned into a kind of gentler town. We, we Our charge of the public school is to keep the kids safe in all ways. Not just physically, but also in terms of identity. Yeah, we don't have to keep it down in our psychology. Oh, we didn't worry about that. Right I know, I'm okay with that too. But that's our charge. But we also have a few more things like is back yeah. over here behind the amphitheater. Yeah, because we graduated. Uh, yeah. Russ, Russ. Russ. Uh, I, I say identity. I have my name. Law now says that we, we have to have an bathrooms here that are just so thick. Oh, right, because it's someone identified. Oh, yeah. Uh, something other than which they were biologically born, then yeah, we've got to allow for that. Which is a little bit dooky in the PE classes, but uh, yeah. we'll that just, work on that. That just happened? Yeah. yeah. So this is what we call the quad. Because you can see we're setting up for the dance here. Why not? It's great weather. Right? The weather is awesome, so why not just take advantage of this area here? The quad is a big hangout area for the students. Sounds kind of as usual, right? This is still an open campus, if you're wondering. At lunchtime, yeah, they do walk over to town and country. Uh, but there are two times in the past, uh, I don't know, 20 years or so, a ton of countries come back and say, can you please close your campus? 
And the reason for that is because it's just a few people who spoil it for everybody else over there. You know, riding a skateboard through a store, no, don't do that, really. Stomp on ketchup packets, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> they you tried know. that when we were students, too. Yeah, I understand that, too, but it's a private, well, you guys had Old Man Wilson and, and Williams also who were in charge. They were even worse. But really, there, the, the view over there is still, um, if it's deterrent, then we don't want them here. And the students here are thinking, wait, you can't survive without us. Well, you know, we went through the summer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on a good day, Pali students can maybe spend about 8000 a day there. It's just on food only, really, oh. essentially. But for the town country, that's a drop in the bucket. Right. Right? Students here don't know that, really. They're pretty egocentric. You remember that, right? <laughs> they're pretty egocentric. I call them nowadays screenagers. <laughs> yep. You know, they're just kind of attached to the screen. They think they're being sly about texting someone when they're looking down. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so anyway, some of these buildings were actually under construction as well as up when you were here, right? Right. Okay, right. So we've actually numbered them accordingly. 100 there is the arts building. 200 is the English building. If you go kitty corner in the back, there, that's the 300 building on social studies and history. Behind this part here is the... Uh, the World Languages Department. We changed the name from foreign language to world language because we thought foreign language was a bit arrogant. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> this building here is the 500. This is the library. We're going to go in there next in just a moment. 600 doesn't exist because we ran out of money when they were building. 700 is math. 800 was here where these portables are, and that was the science. But back in the late 80s, early 90s, the science building became so under code, it was easier to build a new one rather than try to renovate. So we'll get into the science room. We'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. But this is really the main hangout here. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Hi. You want to introduce to this group here? This is Matt Hall. This is our student activities director Hi. and juggler extraordinaire. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to Pali. This is the class of 73. Hey, no way. Awesome. Way. <laughs> Before you were born. I, no, what are you talking about? I was born in 70. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we got our first uh, welcome back to school dance tonight. Aloha Pali is the theme. And we're a couple people are dressed for it. Yeah. I know. I didn't even know. Tommy Bahama. I'm ready. I'll just yeah, yeah, my, uh, I'm student activities director here, part of the admin team, and I also teach Japanese. So I, this is my third year here. I spent 12 years down in Eastside San Jose at Silver Creek High School. Go Raiders! But now I'm here at Pali, loving it. It's a great school. It is outstanding. It is awesome. awesome. Have a great time today. All right, man. All right. Thank you. Let's go to the library. All right. My mom's here. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey. Good to see you, man. The old hollow halls. <laughs> so, yeah, I made it. Is that, Is that Ben? Yeah. Good to see you, man. I'll take a look. You know, I love it. Right, because if you can access the good stuff, you can access the bad stuff, too. <laughs> The hard part is, again, and I actually explained this to a couple people earlier, uh, that our charge here at the public school now is to keep kids safe. And you need to put an adjective in front of the word safe, too, because that's really our charge. So they could be physically safe, they could be uh, emotionally safe, they could be intellectually safe, they could be spiritually safe. There's a lot that goes on with that word safe. And that has increased the job title or job description of the teachers here. Uh, and staff members also. Staff members are very highly regarded here because oftentimes the kids get connected to them better than they can the teachers. So in this information age of access, once they figure something out and they'll make a judgment on whether I like it or not, well, then they'll run with it and see what happens. Okay, you know, for example, yeah, some of you might have been reading the newspaper, and it is the case that as of today, we've been in school for four days, uh, since last Thursday. Remember when we used to start after Labor Day? Yeah. And had admission day off and all that? Yeah, I know. I was there too. Um, we've been in school, let's see, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so seven days. We've had three streakers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that went out in the 70s. I think that started that with our class. class. It started with your class, yeah. How many of you can sing the streak? Ray Stevens. Right? Yeah, I know. I can't say it. I can't say it. But now please understand, as we're re reminiscing about that as being kind of an interesting time, and kind of like, oh, so what? Think of the charge here now. Okay, the kids are kind of like, oh, okay, this is kind of different. But on the other hand, we as the teachers need to realize that this is an 18-year-old exposing themselves to 13-year-olds yeah. who are uncomfortable changing in gym class at Jordan. Is that okay? Was it consensual? 
stuff like that. Honestly, I mean that that's the, the main question. You know, you no, can't the main be a, one yeah. would be, could anybody catch him? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Um, it's it's a fine line knowing when you grew up that way versus where you are now in the, in the establishment, and you can't really have two one foot in each camp now. It's it's hard for me sometimes, but uh, I have to err on the side of taking care of the kids now. But this place does have its moments. Yeah, I mean, the library here will be going under renovation also. We are actually going to have a second floor in here, a little mezzanine here. And this whole area is going to be gutted out a bit and made into more study areas. See, the trend nowadays is more uh, cooperative work, working together. And space like this doesn't necessarily lend itself to that. So when we set up some side rooms, specifically for uh, cooperative group and group work, then this actually should flow quite nicely. The guidance department will be coming from the building up there to down here also to be closer to the students, uh, along with the counseling here. Questions? What's yeah. going into the old building? Uh, it's actually, what's going into the old building, we call it the tower building. Uh, what's going into the tower building really isn't much. It's actually just kind of spreading out. What's going to happen when we finish there uh, on this tour, I'll show you a few more things, but uh, one of the larger rooms which was uh, kept is actually going to be re-preserved into the, uh, so it's the library, one of the libraries I think. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah, it'll be preserved to one of its natural states as well as having an alumni room next door where all the old yearbooks will be. So you can come in and, and enjoy it there. Actually, we have all the yearbooks here from 19... 1901 is the first one they have oh, one? And yeah. quite often history teachers have the kids want to know what they were doing here during the Second World War while they go look at the yearbooks or anything else. How did they react? How did Pally react to the Anti War times? 67 through uh, 69. Yeah, that's very interesting. And they can find a lot of time in yearbook and the Campanile. Yep. So we like them to use them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we lived through it, but they don't know. But it becomes more real actually when they actually read it too, so that's kind of nice. I gotta say yeah. that I'm deeply touched. You guys kept that artwork. Yes. I am amazed. <laughs> Is it gonna survive to the next? Uh... It actually was about ready to be discarded until someone said that there was a historical uh, value to it from the Palo Alto High School perspective, and so it was saved from the trash can. Was and that part of our group? Of... I painted it as a second. Oh, you that. did? Yeah. <laughs> Another 10 years and it qualifies for the antiquities. Yes. <laughs> so, Antiques Road You know what we should do is you should, well, stick around. I'd love to talk with you a little bit more to, find, to see if you remember who else contributed to that. Okay. Okay, because I think that would make sense. Yeah, one of the things we're understanding here is, uh, as we get older, is that there is a place to honor um, the people and the place and then the things that people have done. And we actually don't have that. Ron and I, we're going to start to talk with a few other people to see if we can set up a Hall of Fame. Because there are really actually quite a few people who have come through Palo Alto High School who have done some great things. Highly visible, not necessarily highly visible, but certainly uh, worthy of the students to understand where they came from, which is crucial, as well as what they can do. Because we need to inspire them also. So, anyone from your class or your era that you can think of? We'd love to know. It's something nice. Great. <laughs> yeah, something nice. Notable. Really great. You know, for example, Ollie Johnston, I think, would be uh, one of my first candidates for such a Hall of Fame. Now, I don't know if you know who that is, but he was one of Disney's first seven animators. Um, uh, he's, he worked on Snow White. Snow White was his. Yeah. I understand no, Joan Baez something. came through here. Yeah, Joan Baez did come through here. That's Grace, correct. Grace that would be good. <laughs> Fresh for a little bit, yeah. Jerry right. Garcia. And of course Jerry Garcia, right, yeah. But he didn't finish, but you know, that's still... Oh, he didn't finish. <laughs> no, he didn't finish. That's okay. Um, other people, uh, Bill Lane. How many know who Bill Lane is? Yeah, or Sunset what? Magazine. Sunset Magazine. Sunset Magazine, yeah. He deserves a place here, right? Uh, yeah. How about Bill Larson? Yeah. Roundtable. Oh, okay. Oh. Absolutely. But these kids won't know that unless we actually say yeah. something or put it up there. Right. David Byrd was the first drummer of uh, Beach oh, City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome! This is all silver. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the kids nowadays, their history. I mean, when we think of the big war, they think '91 with Bush and Desert Storm. 
<laughs> yeah, that's not as far back as we need. I mean, for them, the, the famous people are ones who are still famous to them, like James Franco, for example, right. yeah. or Jeremy Lin, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. If you're wondering, no, I did not teach him, but I was in charge of the Christian Club when he was president, so I know him on a different level. The Christian. So, um, yeah, we'd love to set up a place like that, and we're actually going to have uh, uh, the, part of the tower building will be devoted to an alumni room. So hopefully, somewhere down the road, I don't know when. Um, hopefully within 10 years we'll actually have that established. Okay? Shall we move on? Yep. Yes. Let's go see a science room. Let's go see a science room. Oh, I'd love to stroll through, but we stroll through. Oh, very cool. This year or two I came back a lot to like uh, James and the Woodshop teacher. Uh, I remember. Wow. Did some work for him. Yeah. We had a pretty good relationship. Yeah. Yeah. You remember Barley Hillborn? I remember Barley Hillborn. Yeah. For which shot? Who is the metal shot? The Downs. The Downs. The Downs. Take the Downs. David Downs. And then the electric guy. Yeah, we don't. Nobody liked him. What was Joe Joe? Joe Joe. Costarella. He was. Man, they were all three of them. This was uh, 19, I got to think about this, in 98 maybe, 97, 98, I think is when this came up here. Uh, because again, what used to be one of the older buildings was so under code. See, whenever you build now, you always have to build things not only up to code, but also up to uh, what's called ADA code, right? The American Disabilities Act code. And so whenever we make any renovations or changes to anything that was existing, uh, we always have to go through two sets of hoops. Sometimes it takes a long time. So we decided to build a new one here. What used to be here was our amphitheater, actually, where we held our rallies. It was kind of a downhill thing with the, yeah. the stage. Yeah. That was yeah. 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 Oh, so this was the spot. Uh, it was for this here. No, I, mean, yeah. I mean, just for that, it, just for this. Yeah, building? the footprint. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and we also lost a sand volleyball court too. Um, yeah. I was bummed at that. Yeah, a, a lot of class gifts have actually been plowed under. They didn't realize they were class gifts. <laughs> <laughs> so as it's it's kind of an unfortunate byproduct with with uh, the uh, newer administration not necessarily understanding um, some of the things that were intended to be a legacy. Oh. Nevertheless, though, uh, this is what we have as a science room. Now, the science rooms actually nowadays have to be built specifically for the subject. So, for example, here, even though we have a periodic table back there, this is not a chemistry room. Because if it was a chemistry room, what would be in here? Beakers? Beakers. Sinks. 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 There's sinks here, though, but what else? Gas jets. Gas jets. There you go. Gas jets. Right. So the science rooms are actually built specifically for the subjects here. So this is actually a bio room. Bio what? Uh, biology. Dice. Oh. Dice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we don't dissect anymore. Oh, we don't dissect. Yeah, as you can see, as this, the reason I come to this room is because it's a outfitted. Minute, wait a minute, we got physics books, physics equations. Right, so simple, ever? yeah, you can use the simple physics here without <laughs> any uh, serious experiments in here. Because there's no real long table. It's kind of funny. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Again, but again, this room is used. Uh, yeah, this room is outfitted pretty much the way that a lot of rooms are now. That with some of the technology, for example, we've got projectors on the overhead here, so we don't have to trip over the cords. A lot of things are done electronically. Uh, in this room here, um, the TV is an old TV, but you know it's efficient. But usually, in my room, what I do is I just show it through my computer up here, so it's a bigger screen. Um, the other trend that's going on is what's called the document camera. Familiar with that? Most courtrooms have one to display around, but uh, it's actually turned into quite the nice tool instead of the overhead projector. Because remember those pens that you, yeah, and teach that. And, and, uh, yeah. and uh, they got they got very hot too. <laughs> they get very very hot. Yeah, I remember the scrolling thing. It was terrible. When you're punished, you can do that. Yeah. No, but, yeah, but the document camera has actually turned into a very nice tool for a few reasons. One, you can actually display a lot of things underneath there, like a, just a regular piece of paper. You can use regular penmanship, you know, with a normal pencil or a pen. You can put other people's works under there. Um, the lens is actually just the right size for a microscope, so you can actually put a microscope underneath there and just show it, so not everyone has to crowd around that one planaria, you know, and such. And actually, you can do a dissection under there if you want to without everyone getting dirty, you know, you can say, oh, this is where it is and that it is. We actually don't do dissections anymore. Uh, we, uh, it's a teacher's choice, actually. 
uh, and most of the teachers who don't, they actually just display it as someone doing a video and such. That's but with the advent of all the technology nowadays, uh, there's a lot out there on uh, online that we can show in class, um, including YouTube videos and, and other things um, in terms of lessons and such. Oh, not the cat videos? Actually, those probably make it to the classroom on occasion. <laughs> yeah, there's some other things that kind of are just kind of, oh, we got some spare time, let's go for something goofy type of thing. So that's all. But this is, yeah, again, a typical room. Here's the unfortunate part, though. Once we built this, we were still growing. And so these 11 rooms that are designated for science are not going to be sufficient enough. Because, again, our, our, grad, our incoming ninth graders take bio. Everybody takes biology as a ninth grader now. And... Uh, we just have so many ninth graders now that we have to build. We have a, a kind of an emergency um, construction going on on the back side of this building starting next year uh, to build four new science rooms. So as new as this building is, we just had to build more right away. It's kind of an interesting problem to have. So that we are growing. That's just all there's to it. Projections are that we might even go to 2,400 on campus. Does that mean the population wow. of Palo Alto is growing? Yeah. That is correct. It is growing. <laughs> Okay, and here's part of the reason. Here's part of the reason. It's kind of a double-edged sword. There's, Palo Alto, the city of Palo Alto, is trying to abide by uh, sort of what I call the green law, where if you have X number of businesses, sorry, I'm a math teacher. If you have X number of businesses, then you try to have a, a commensurate uh, percentage of housing so that people can walk to work, bike to work, things like that. Yes. Well, Palo Alto is very top-heavy in terms of business. Oh. And so instead of curbing the number of businesses, they're building they're saying, more houses. Let's build more houses. Where so, are they going to build them? Well, that's the thing. You ready? Bowling alley's gone. Yeah. Oh. Where, where was the bowling alley? Uh, Fiesta Lanes was on El Camino by right. Susana right. Flicker. Oh, that bowling alley. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember. Yeah, that one. Yeah. No, Indian Bowl went first a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Indian Bowl went first, then Tresseter went, and now Fiesta Lanes just went a couple years ago. But yeah, it's a lot of the things that we grew up with, again, are, are being uh, raised under. And I'm saying that kind of tongue-in-cheek because we, as we remember these fondly, uh, nowadays people really don't see the use for it if it's not being utilized very well. And so they just want to change it to the way that they want to. And that's just the way cities are. Uh, I won't call it progress necessarily because I'm from here too, right? I'm with you. Yet that's just the way it is changing. Yeah, question. Um, when we when we were in high school, there were three high schools. Correct. And there were high, the high school enrollment was about forty eight hundred divided by three. Yes. So now, if you've got twenty four here, yes, you haven't really had any growth in your high school enrollment in the district. Correct. <laughs> okay. <Busted>. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I say growth is because uh, we had a, it was a very serious decline uh, in, in the overall enrollment period, uh, and, and it was because our parents didn't move out to make place for younger families to come in and such. Well, that has been happening now, and so you're right; the numbers don't match quite yet still. Um, so there actually has some people who have the foresight of thinking, well, okay, maybe we want to do this, maybe we want to do that, maybe we shouldn't have sold that site. Oh yeah. well, too late. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we are down to 12 elementary schools, uh, and we can we have the ability to recapture two, if I remember correctly, right? Garland. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, Hills also. Oh, we can get Fremont Hills back. You're right, because that's Pinewood, and then we could also get, uh, reopen Greendale, Green which is part of Carverly. I'm sorry? What about Coverly? Uh, I wouldn't mind if they reopened Coverly, but that's really on the back burner for a few reasons. One is when they closed it, they decided not to sell it. What do you know? Um, and it's actually kind of a cash cow right now in terms of rent. Oh. Uh, and that's really hard for the district to let go of. Yeah, it's well over a million a year in rent. And the city, the city of Palo Alto pays it. Yeah, the city of Palo Alto pays the rent here. The stupid thing is that we rent a couple rooms from the city of Palo Alto that's renting it from us. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's, that's another thing. Well, our so yeah, probably back burner. We'll see. Our population <clears throat> went up to 16,000 something in 1968. Because you go to Jordan today and they think, oh, it's so big. Well, it wasn't nearly as big as when you were there. And, uh, but uh, it fell down to in, into the 8,000. So that's like half of it. So when people say, why'd you close schools or something? Well, we were 
top heavy with schools and every school costs so much to operate. And then again, we were in the high spending district, one of the 8% high dist spending districts in the Sacramento could care less, Palo Alto and Beverly Hills, you take care of yourself. So the sale of those properties kept, it went back and it was able to keep our teachers' salaries in good place over the years. So it really augmented uh, the, uh, the budget to a great extent. Yeah, there's a, uh, about 55 districts in California that are what are called basic aid. Some of you might know that. Um, okay. uh, most of the other schools are what's called ADA or average daily attendance. They have to be very careful with that. Now their attendance is set and then they get money based upon their average daily attendance. We don't do that. It's basic aid. We get a lump sum from the state at the beginning of the year saying this is how many we're going to have and we'll have the ability to float bond issues through the community that cares. And that's really how we've done it. And that's the way it was when we were growing up also. So you can see why perhaps the board chose to sell the school sites and let developers put housing on there because then we get the property tax, which is really uh, a large part of our uh, funding for the schools. Well, what happened in 1978? Jarvis Gann. Right. Yeah. And that severely cut things. And therefore, it was a, it was a very, it was not quite a no-brainer to close a high school because it got expensive, right? But it was just a matter of which one. And that was the that was the difficult. Well, and it made it easy for the district because both Gunn and Pally are on Stanford land, <clears throat> and we bought it from Stanford. But there's a provision in both of these uh, pieces of property; it reverts back to Stanford if you use it for anything other than an educational purpose. Coverly had no such restriction, yeah. right. Ooh, even though it was the cheapest of the three schools around. What about the daycare they just bought on San Antonio? What are they doing with that? And they buy that straight. They're the leasing it did. back. Yeah, it's still the pit. This is a home field advantage for us here. There's no other school here that has the stands up there. Everything nowadays is pull the bleachers out of the sides of the walls. Yeah, that's not going to happen here. No, this is still the original pit, and we love it here. We really do. But as, I, as you heard me say in the beginning also, this one as well as the small gym. Remember, we used to call them boys and girls, I think, right? Yeah, we call them big and little now. The two gyms are actually going to be gone. And within one year, we should have two plus gyms where this will be a brand new spanking gym, and that one will also, but it will have a ground floor underneath. It will have a basement with locker rooms and classrooms and so on and so forth. So we'll have a horseshoe around the pool, which is a really nice pool, still in honor of North Thornton. Um, and oh, wow. Dodge Dart, yeah. Yeah, this is that parking down here. Hey, Dale, I forgot where I parked. We're gonna not, we can't spend too much time in there, unfortunately, but you know, we'll just walk in the stands, take a look. Um, we have had some very good success in recent years, and you'll see the banners on the walls for that. We've had uh, a football championship. They resurrected that idea a few yeah. years ago, and we got a football championship where our QB's last name was Bono, right. as in Steve Bono, and Steve is still a quarterback's coach here. Uh, we've had two basketball championships where we've always been the underdog. Uh, which has been awesome, and Jeremy Lynn was the most recent one for that one there. A uh, little legacy note there, actually, David Jefferson was on the 1993 team, and his nephew, C.B. Brown, was on the 2005 team. So we'll see how that continues on in there. Uh, we also have two volleyball championships, and these are the ones about which I'm most proud because they're back-to-back. -back. Because when students graduate, oftentimes you lose some of your star players. So to go back-to-back, -back really, to me, is awesome. And that just happened three years ago. And that's what's going on in there right now, volleyball practice, so we'll see. We've been very good at volleyball in recent years, and it's been really fun to watch. In girls' so, volleyball. In girls' volleyball, yeah. Right, we still don't have boys' volleyball here. Uh, the <laughs> biggest sport that's really come on the rise now, lacrosse. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And we'll go by the lacrosse field as we go back to the tower building after this. So what I'll let you do is we'll go up to the stands here. There's some, uh, yeah, if you're wondering, yeah, if you heard right, there was a fire here, actually, in 97. And so the question was, do we get rid of this and start over again, or do we try to fix it? The next day, after the fire, <laughs> Senator Ron Wyden right. <laughs> calls and says, you are going to save the gym, right? Yeah, all the way from Oregon. He heard about it while he was 
Probably on the Senate well. floor, I think, actually. Six so that was kind of interesting. Yeah, he's class of 67. You'll see his name up here, too. You'll and he swears that the coach, his coach, basketball coach, helped save him. It's possible. During the time, the family situation, so forth, gives all the credit to the sport was, of basketball. Yeah. And his was coach. his basketball coach Clem Weiser? Yeah. It would be Clem, that's right, yeah. He was still in town. He's so still it, around. Yeah. With the, it, so in the mid-70s, uh, a lot of schools were still here, and the leagues decided to split. So we're not SPAL. Okay, we're part of the Santa Clara Valley Athletic League, or SCAVAL, because we're the most northern city in Santa Clara County. You cross the creek, you're at MA territory, but that's San Mateo County. All right, so that's where the split is now. They're in uh, the uh, Sequoia area, and we're in the Santa Clara Valley Athletic League. And we have so many schools here, we actually split into two divisions. The uh, uh, the Anza Vision and the El Camino Vision, kind of like uh, you know reading groups back in the <laughs> Orioles and Bluebirds. Yeah, and, yeah, but you can move back and forth depending on how you do and how your JV team does. But here we have this. We have the baseball field in honor of uh, George Humpty Diddy. Um, Hurley. How many of you had drivers training from Hurley? Anyone? No. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then our football field. And then our football field. Now I'm not going to walk over there, but you're invited to stay, go over there sometime tomorrow if you want to, because you know we're getting shorter on time here. But it's really quite a nice place. Viking Stadium is actually really nice. We can seat now 1,700, and we have night games. Do you have a homecoming game in Pusey City Kids? We do have a homecoming game, but honestly, we don't dictate that. It gets dictated by Scaval because we can't have everybody's homecoming game on the same week. Otherwise, the businesses around it go crazy. So it's not against the same school? It's not against the same school. As a matter of fact, we actually took gun off of our schedule this year. Because in recent years, the closest game has been 49 to nothing. <laughs> it's not fun for anyone. All right, so why don't you go up here? Let's go up the stairs real quick and then come back out here. Follow. How you doing? Here we go. Yeah. 
terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's great. I'll send that to you. Do they still do any like auto shop, yep. aero? Right there. Do they have the aero oh, shop right. too? Aeroplane? They have the aeroplanes here. That's right. But it's now an adult. What we call the applied academics or the career tech. Yeah, we still have an auto shop here and we have a wood shop. But no one ever signs up for them anymore. Oh, really? Auto, yes. Not wood, not yeah. metals. The reason? Well, we've got a bit more tech, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when they say, can you use a computer? Yeah, fine. I can turn it on. <laughs> not good enough. You know, we, we, I mean, the people who program the programs that are, we're using nowadays are retiring and they need to be replaced. So, but unfortunately, the kids don't think of that. But that's just how they've turned out now. Okay, they're they're really the screenagers, as as yeah. I explained earlier yeah. here. Still, we do have a lot of school spirit here. Our our sports have done very well. We've got the two main fields here, of course. Um, soccer's had very good success recently. But their football field here, it's really pretty ah, nice if you think about it. Yeah, we can hold 1,700 people here. We now have Friday night football. Artificial turf. Artificial turf, right? So they don't use metal spikes because their feet get really hot otherwise. Think about it. Uh, and then an all-weather track, eight-lane weather track. <laughs> and this is our sports area now. Okay. Now again, we're not going to stop over there, but if you're still interested, some time come by and, and join us for a game. Really, most uh, our uh, schedule's online. And if you're in town, please do come on by. It'd be awesome to have you in the stands here too. Right now, I'd like to take you back to the tower building. We'll finish up there. And if you're really good and you really want to stick around before you go to the Sheraton, I'll show you the basement of the tower building. Oh, my God. Oh, we've been there. The dungeon. The basement. You know where the... How many know about... There is a basement there. I never knew that. A couple of people? Okay. Skeletons down there. Apple Pie Hut. Yeah. Remember? Retiring is a really good idea. But we hope to. Now we will refurbish this. But this is low on the totem pole because there's no student classrooms in here. There are no student classrooms in here. This is where they had that memorial class. Yeah, that's outside here. It's outside. It's still here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So welcome back to the Tower Building. Home of plenty of classrooms for you folks, I'm sure. And actually, I taught in here the, my first year also. But again, with the new codes and we're trying to come up to ADA standards, uh, we no longer really have classrooms in here. The main reason, there's no elevator. <laughs> right? Uh, and we're not talking about someone who, say, is wheelchair bound. We're talking about someone who, let's say, broke their ankle in PE. Climbing the stairs is actually quite the challenge. It makes them quite late, as a matter of fact, here, right? So we choose not to have classes up in here. Instead, what we have is admin, we have the health office, we have the guidance services. The counseling system has changed a bit. I can talk your ear off on that, too. That changed in, 90, in 92, but I know you have other things to do. Um, but nevertheless, though, this has been preserved and kept. Uh, well, preserved is the wrong word. But uh, th <laughs> there's, ha there's been enough of a contingency to say, let's not get rid of this building. And it will not go away. It really will not. With all the projects that are going on on campus, this will be one of the last projects to happen because it, there aren't students here, right? We try to do the student stuff first. But yes, admin will stay in here. They're directly behind me here in the main office. Uh, and we will refurbish this, and the floor will actually probably have no more dings in here. <laughs> we'll see. But as we refurbish this, remember the codes? We will be putting in an elevator. Okay, so a couple of rooms at the end there, first floor and second floor, will now become an elevator shaft. That's what's going to happen. Do you remember okay. in 10th grade in the January there was a huge rainstorm oh, and there was a that. ramp, it went down oh a little bit and we brought buckets of water that's and people that's were that's doing that's what this slide. He was just, just telling you us. You and I were the only ones that remember that. And I caught my finger in the in the heater yeah. grate as I went by. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, that's what I remember. I mean there were hundreds of people lining on that side and people were running down and going down the ramp into the... And that was our... That was our education. <laughs> that sums up our... That was one of the best days. There were people here who remembered Hollywood and Vine. Yeah. Uh, Maybe by the... Year, do you remember that? Because people tell me, oh, I'll meet you at Hollywood and Vine. I said, what? <laughs> well, then they showed me where it was. It was that intersection right yeah. there, down there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's exactly it. So what will happen is the room over here, where it says guidance and register, will actually be refurbished into a, a meeting room slash alumni area, designated area. So you can actually have meetings in here 
Uh, the Alumni the Association library. is, yes it is, the yeah. Alumni Association is growing stronger. We're having meetings on a regular basis and we'll actually have all the, all the old yearbooks over here, a little kitchenette here too. So let's say if your reunion committee wants to plan something, you're welcome to use that room to plan it if you want it sometime, but we're going to restore it back to its natural beauty. Where, where is the principal's office? principal's office is directly behind us here, behind this wall here. Bill, it's in the same place. Is that right? I did I heard you. Yeah. I just want to say, woman principal. Wow. Yeah. one thing to all, to all you people who are coming here and a lot of classes, but what we didn't realize when we were in this educational institution was how great the teachers were how great the facilities were, and particularly, we didn't realize how great the other students were. And think about that, and think about the accomplishments out here. Now, is there an attorney in the house? What? Oh my goodness, we had six we're, in my class. It's a, it's a great group. We're <laughs> Yeah. Really, this does hold some special meaning for obviously the three of us. I, uh, I, this is really officially uh, conclude the official part of the tour. So I thank you very much for your time, and I hope you've had fun being Gosh, thick thank with you. us. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That's promised. Also, if you really want to, you're welcome to roam the halls because we have a lot of memorabilia up here, including your '70s over there. You can see your your compatriots. Oh, right there. Okay. But if you really want to go see the basement, if you're interested in that, uh, then I'll take tours. I had to take about uh, at most probably about seven or eight at a time. And what it's kind is of a small space. space. Basement? In the basement. It's dead body. And that's where the chains were. <laughs> Mr. Loon, did you say how to join the Alumni Association? I did not, but you're welcome to go online to uh, join us. Uh, you know, that's a good point. I don't have any flyers here today. I'll have them here tomorrow for the class of 63. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you can actually send a letter here. Are you doing a tour for the class of 63? Lisa? Uh, yeah. uh, 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 I think I just saw her. I don't have my. See, yes, there's a dead. Uh, I did. Yeah, yeah. Mal Schoen, nobody yeah. knows. Well, a few people. <laughs> well, I mean, I looked through the yearbook and there were many. Yeah, were you? Yeah. 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 I don't see that. Yeah. 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 Is that Bill Shire? Is that Mary Sports? Yeah. 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 I didn't know Greta, but I knew I knew no, <laughs> Bill and Erica and David. I'm an imposter. Yeah. There's Tricky Dicky. He wasn't in our class. Though. Oh, there's Michael. Oh, is that is that Leanne? Is that Leanne Cummings? Right? I remember them. I remember them. Oh, that's uh, that's, that's West Rowland. You have to push it halfway. Nancy Jameson. They're going to be here tonight. They're going to be there tomorrow. Later on. I uh, Doug Peck. Oh, Doug Peck. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if Doug's going to be there or not. Yeah.